Hey friends, this is Bobby Shanks, author of the upcoming book, Undateable. Here's a little sample for you. And uh, today's podcast is going to be stellar. It's going to be the best one we've ever done. I have a special co-host with me today who actually appeared, not in person, but by subject, on a little clip that I did back on May 13th. So if you scroll down in your social media, you go to May 13th, you can catch that. And she is going to be live here in person to tell that story that I told over two months ago, almost three months ago, actually. And it is, to date, the most powerful, the most emotional and for me, the most successful story on a show that we have done to date because it actually highlights the entire purpose of why I wrote this book almost a year ago. Stay tuned. Hey friends, this is Bobby Shanks, author of Undateable, the book coming out very, very soon. And on my left here, I have the world's greatest producer, the Chewbacca, the Luke Skywalker, the Yoda, the Obi-Wan Kenobi, because yes, I love Star Wars, Ian Brown, our show's producer. What's up, man? Well, we uh, didn't have the technical difficulties this time around that we had last episode, so we're already off to a better start. Yeah, well, we're trying some new stuff. It's all good. So let me introduce our guest host, who I'm super excited to announce because you and I have a little bit of a uh, history, which we'll have to explain, <laughs> and what brought you in today, because this has been a long time coming. Yeah. Um, this is Karin. Hi. So tell us a little bit about yourself. What do you do? What do I do? I'm a travel agent, and... You specialize in what type of travel? <laughs> Luxury travel, romance travel, honeymoons, destination weddings. I also do family vacations. I do all of that, but yes. So basically, bow, chicka, bow, bow. <laughs> <laughs> travel. Yeah, maybe a little bit. Yeah, I so like that's to my... send couples off that's to really awesome. great places. So what a great job. It's fun. Okay, so just, just for fun, tell us, like, Coming up here, you're going to go to Mexico, and what are you going to do? Um, well, I'm going to Mexico on a personal trip in a month with my new boyfriend. Right. High five. Yeah. Three months. And then um, I'm going to stay at a resort that I've been wanting to see, but that I'm going to be off the grid, hopefully. Hopefully. And then um, in October, I'm going to go... Our agency is going to go down, and we're going. I'm going a couple days before everybody else, and then they're going to join me, and we're going to. Um, we're all going to go visit a whole bunch of resorts. We do site inspections. That's how mm -hmm. we know what we want to book for people and what we like, and we we literally walk the entire campus of every resort. We see every room category. We eat at a lot of the restaurants and. So basically what you're saying is <laughs> you have the coolest job of anybody on the earth. It's pretty fun. <laughs> and I get to dress like I just came back from the Caribbean every day. So like, you know, flip flops are definitely not taboo. Like what? I can. Like <laughs> Where did I go wrong? Yeah. I should have been a travel agent. What the? It's Let's just scrap job. this whole book idea and. <laughs> you know what? Screw this book. I'm going to. Are you hiring? Because I need a job. No, no, I don't now, think so. <laughs> uh, so I'm going to I'm going to give you some props here because you were just. Don't say that yet. <laughs> uh, well, let's just say that you are uh, accomplished. Thank you. In your industry. So high five to you. Yes. All right. Well, let's get this. Uh, let's get this show rolling. Let's start with a little requested or rejected. So do you understand, right? Yes. Requested Hold on. or rejected. Yes, Hold on. I've watched the show. I'm starting with first date questions. I, she, there's, I got a couple good ones for her. Oh, oh for me. Good, good. <laughs> let's do so this. first date questions is the segment where we uh, ask questions that we would typically ask someone on a first date. <laughs> And oh, we gosh. all go around the room and answer. 
Okay. So this one's kind of tailored to you. Where is the weirdest place you have ever been? The weirdest. The weirdest? Yeah, the the place where you're. It was just a little odd. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. On a date? On a or date just or just in general? Okay. Oh, yeah. okay. I thought you meant in general. Yeah, no, I this is a great were, question for her. Because I thought, I, I immediately thought about travel. Yeah, hit it. <laughs> Yeah, travel. So these are questions you would ask on a first date. So we wouldn't ask about where's My, the weirdest first date you've ever been on. Yeah, you maybe. wouldn't ask that gotcha. on a first. Yeah, date I don't know because you don't want to talk about other first dates on a first date. <laughs> Probably not. That would be that would be an awkward thing to talk about. That's a short date. Yeah, that's not a good conversation starter. <laughs> uh, um, not the, so much. The weirdest place that I've ever been. I don't know if it's weird. <laughs> I went to, I okay. I was in Jamaica, and I love Jamaica. It's one of my favorite islands. It is my. It's probably one of my favorite places to go. And we were in the grill in the Negril West End, and we did a pub crawl of some really local, uh, really kind of some local bars. And there was just this one particular bar that was just really, it was fun. It was totally, I was loving the vibe, but it was definitely um, just, I don't even know if I can. It Say, was, it. <laughs> Say it. Say it. Say <laughs> it. Well, there was just like this, this blind dog that only had two legs sitting outside and then like this other really inebriated person that was just there trying to talk to us and just, it was, it was just. I don't even, I can't even explain the vibe. And Chicken, then, chickens running <laughs> through the bar. It was kind of crazy. It was fun, though. It was a lot of fun. And then, I don't know. One of the other craziest things that ever happened to me was one time I was in Costa Rica. And um, I had just, we had just done this mud coming down off a volcano. We um, we went on this slide down the volcano. And then it was, I was there during rainy season. So we did these volcanic hot baths, you know, and we were, we were sitting in them in our swimsuit and it was raining on us and steam was coming up and it was amazing. We did the mud and all that. And I go back to the bathroom to change, to get ready to go back home to the resort. And I'm just, you know, I've got my bikini, I'm soaking wet, I'm getting in my bag. And it was one of those kind of old school bathrooms like at a camping facility. <laughs> You know, it was pretty, it wasn't fancy. And I looked down and I see something move right next to the toilet. And I was like, I looked and I just saw the corner of my eye and it was black. And I looked and it was a tarantula that was oh like literally gosh. this big. Oh and gosh. I, I, I was like, I was half, I had my, I had my top off. I was, I was halfway dressed. I grabbed my bag. I jumped up on top of the toilet and I was like, oh my God. I don't need to, I don't need to change. I don't need to change. And I um, threw my shirt on and I, I rode all the way back to the resort with a wet swimsuit and everything. And then I run out of there. <laughs> a so, tarantula. That's awesome. Yeah. But I still love Costa Rica. So that's my answer to that. I'm actually going to use a recent example just because it's on the forefront of my mind. Um, so this past weekend, I took a four day weekend. I went to Sedona, Arizona. Mm. Um, there's a website called writers share uh -huh. and it's for people mm -hmm. that, uh, want to rent motorcycles in anywhere in the world. Oh, that's cool. And I rented a bike, uh, from a guy who has a bike very similar to mine. So, so the name of my bike is autumn. Yeah. Yeah. And, and he had a bike that was a very similar orange color as mine. And so I met him and took the bike and I went through all of the hairpin turns, uh, through the mountains, uh, leading from Prescott up to, uh, Sedona, uh, up to, and even as far as Flagstaff, which is just yeah. under 7,000, uh, feet elevation. And Sunday, I'm riding back and like I'm on the clock because my flight, 
back to St. Louis is supposed to leave at 3.45 p.m. Uh-huh. It's 1 p.m. Oh, I'm in the desert. You're making the travel agent nervous. I'm in the desert. <laughs> and it rains like half an inch. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. But here's the thing. When it rains in the desert, it's like massive flooding. So yeah. I hang out underneath... I think the only bridge in Arizona for almost two hours. One, two, Miss my flight. Yeah, I was going to say you missed your flight. Miss my flight. Yeah. And uh, now here's the thing. <laughs> I live my whole life by a schedule. I am a slave to my calendar. So when I get out of state, and especially if I'm on a bike, I don't want to schedule. Right. Um, no, I get that. Yeah. I, I, I bet you do. Yeah. yeah absolutely. <laughs> and so I'm hanging out underneath this bridge. There's actually another biker there uh, with his wife. And I'm just like, yeah, I'm going to miss my flight. <laughs> <laughs> And so it, it was weird, but here I am talking about it because those weird stories and those, uh, spontaneous adventures. Yeah. That's, that's salt. That's the salt on life. And that's yeah. what I love. That's the fun stuff. Great, great question. Yeah, it is a good question. All right. We're going on to your favorite segment requested or rejected. You want to explain it? All right, so requested or rejected, for those of you that are new, requested means our producer here, Ian, is going to say, hey, here's this scenario. Do you like this or do you not like this? Do you request this or you reject this? You've seen this, so you know yes. kind of how this works. I know how it works. Um, so hit us with something uh, super cool. All right. Hikes on a first date. <laughs> Dude, he is like this. This 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 yeah. guy is an evil. <laughs> he is an evil genius. Oh my gosh. Hikes on a first date. I've done it. I've done it. I've done it. <laughs> Actual hike. Mastodon State Park right down the street from here. I hike there all the time. All right, you go. Um, hikes on a So, a guy hits you up and he's like, "Hey, let's uh let's make our first date a hike." Okay. So, <laughs> I have gone on three first date hikes. I won't do it now, though. Like, I won't do it anymore. Like, I changed my policy. But it used to be when I, when I used to be on the dating apps, um, the, um, I, one of the things I had on there was how I love to hike. I had a picture of me hiking with Mount Rainier behind me. And um, so the guys would all want to hike. They would all talk to me and want to go hiking. And they didn't think anything of it because they're, they know that they're a good guy. But I don't know them. And so it's a little unnerving having guys that you don't know asking to take you out in the woods. <laughs> and more than one at the same time. And so they don't think of it like that. Right. They don't, you know. But for me, from my end, I'm like, oh, I think I need to train my, change my profile to say I don't hike on the first date. I think that would be cute. You don't do what on the first date? Hike. <laughs> what? I don't, come again? I don't hike on the first right, date. Okay. I think Stranger. that would be cute if I had a profile, which I don't right now. Right. But um, I, I went on one first date. I ended up dating that gentleman for two and a half years, and he's the person I, that we broke up last year. And then the other two dates, one, it actually, neither of them were, ended up good. Both of them were gentlemen that I met on dating apps. One gentleman, we, so I'm a, a girly girl, but I'm also a country girl. Yes. And I'm a little bit of a badass. Like yes. I clean up well, but like I know how to drive a four wheeler and I know how to run a trot line. I am, you know, so we were high, he came down from, and I'm not gonna just, he was just from a very urban area compared to where I live. I'm not going to say. So he say, was a city boy. He was a city boy, and he came down. He probably down. wore, like, 
like fur lined Gucci slippers. No, and a well, Louis I already, kind, I kind of knew what he did. We'd already had this discussion because at first he didn't want to tell me who he was. And then when I found out who he was, I Googled him. And if he, that's why, because he's a well known person. And he came and picked me up in this like very, very top end BMW. And I met him at a place that I've told you is like my living room yep. that, and I don't ever meet dates there anymore. Yep. I only take people there if I really like them. And then it's a sign to the owners there. Um, but <laughs> when I left with him, he, I left and, and um, when I came back in after the date, the owner of the place, he looked at me and he goes, Karin, when you left, we thought, Oh, she's left with the man from the mafia. We're never going to see her again oh, no. because he did look very city <laughs> and like we're hiking and I realize he's got this like really expensive like Rolex on and he's got a hiking stick and I'm all in my cutoff shorts and my hair <laughs> braided with a Cardinals cap on and I'm like, okay, whatever. But hmm. all right. Yeah, so that's the answer to that. I have one story um <laughs> it's i don't know maybe semi-recent uh within the last few months i met a girl on a dating app super cute and for our first date i said hey would you like to go to uh, well, I'll just say it, Mastodon State Park, and let's do a little hike. I'd never done that before. It was my first time. And I will say that it went well. Well, that's good. So I'm a requested. I feel like that's a little more populated, too. Oh, for sure. We're not talking about the mountains here. No, like the where, and I think that would be, that would make a yeah, we're difference. We're not talking about Rainier here. That, well, that would, that would make a difference. Cause where I took this person to hike was kind of south of here. Yeah. So if, <laughs> if I didn't exactly take her into the woods, you know, it's, it's a state park with lots of families and kids and yeah. strollers. And You're going to run into people. It's a, di yeah. that's a, that would be different. Yeah. Now it, it did not go much further than that date, but uh, I had a good experience overall. So I'm a requested. I'm not a request anymore because from a girl's point of view, I want the first date to be the first time I see him to be where I can dress up and look really cute. I want to dress awesome. up more. That's like the third or fourth date, I'll hike with you. Yeah. Then, I think it's a third or a fourth date type yeah. of thing. But first date, I want to hmm. do my hair pretty and look cute. No, to and say. also, I think a first date should always be a mutual, uh, a place where uh, you can mutually agree to both leave. Yeah, because if so, it goes, yeah. Yeah, if you go to a hike and you're three miles down the trail, well, you got to walk all the way back. You're committed. Yeah, like that's that's a big deal where if you just go to dinner and you're like, yeah, I'm going to leave early i mean but you can be respectful Sneak about out it the bathroom window yeah i've never done that i haven't either <laughs> so, awesome i've wanted to all right give us another one all right so first impressions overruling early red flags so Ooh. you what do you mean so for example your first impression of jimmy is amazing and you know he's he's an awesome guy and whatever but there's some early red flags that start to creep up as you get to know him over a week or two um Dude, how you long get do, out of my head how long <laughs> how long do you hold on to that early first impression and before you allow the red flags to be what they are Oh yeah, I love this one. Are you I going first? Are you one. going first or am I? You go first on this one. Okay. So as a man, I am I am. I'll admit it. 
I am an absolute weakling sucker for a pretty face. And if the lady that I am on a date with is beautiful, I'm weak. So here's the thing. I, I call it the eye exam. Anybody who watches the show has heard me say this before. Mm -hmm. um, I have dated women from uh, from over six foot, over 200 pounds, to as little as four foot 10 and 100 pounds, and everything in between. For me, it's, it's all about the neck up. So if she's smart, she's funny, super cute, long hair, I, I'm, I'm a sucker. I fall for it. It's a trap. <laughs> it's a trap. It's, it's the, a trap, Ian. It's, it's a trap. It's a woman trap. <laughs> it is. It's a trap for me. <laughs> and, and women who know that, they, oh, women are so much smarter than men. It's not even funny. They know it's a trap. And I will look past some first, second, and third date, and I'm being very specific here. First, second, and third date, red flags. Because if she's funny, right? I'm, you know, like a chick, right? If she's, mm -hmm. if the guy's funny, mm -hmm. right? Makes you laugh, you have a good time, it's easy, right? It's just, it's easy. Yeah. Um, you can look past some red flags, but I will say in my defense, Past a third date, maybe probably even really a second date, but definitely past a third date. If it like you, you just can't deny the red flags. Right. Sometimes the red flags pop up later. Oh my gosh. How That's about a this? tragedy. How about if, how about if you're on a third date and she tells you she's married? Oh, for Pete's sake. <laughs> Then you haven't been checking case net. Check. I, I'm not a case net. Like I'm just going to. I'm going. I'm busy. Like, look, if you're on a dating take, app and you say you're single, like, yeah, and and we click, right? Right, we match. Bumble. We bumble before Bobby, we fumble. Oh my god. People say get... a lot of things on dating oh, apps. You don't have to tell me. I know. So I'm speaking from experience. Yeah. I'm, and Bumble is oh, the I'm one. Speaking from experience. Yeah, me too. <laughs> So for the purposes of the question, the reality is, I guess I'm a rejected <laughs> or I'm sorry, I'm a requested, but common sense would tell me I should be a rejected. I don't think I've ever responded like that before. But so I'm, you're I'm also having a total dude moment. Absolutely. You also say that your common sense goes out the window a little bit. That's I, You got to rein it back in. Yeah. Well, even I'm still learning. Oh, yeah. All right. We all are. Your turn. My turn. Okay, so I'm going to say when I see a red flag, mm the red flag pops up and I, it's a flag and I, it'll, it'll not me. I won't, it'll, <laughs> that's it for me. That's it. However, I want to say something about first impressions. Sometimes, you know, that you, they say you don't ever get a chance to make a, a second first impression. Mm -hmm. And my first impressions have been wrong on people before. Like, and I feel well, like that's interesting. And like, I, sometimes I have a first impression that, Mm, I'm not really, maybe I'm not into him as much, or maybe I don't know what I think. But then as I go out with them and I spend more time, then I start liking them more. So my first impression changes. And I feel like, so I try to give people a fair shake because I sometimes, I know that sometimes my first impression can be kind of, I, I mean, I don't know what my first impression is for people because nobody's ever told me, but... <laughs> um, but anyway, red flags though, if, if it's a significant flag, 
if it's a little red flag, maybe I'll look, overlook it. But if it's like one of these really big, like a really big red flag, it's done. Mm-hmm. You might that's, not even get you topic, might not even yeah. get a return call. I I I know ghosting is bad, but I've ghosted a couple of people because of really bad red flags, and they were things that hmm. were not accurate mm -hmm. on mm -hmm. their profile and I was like well if you can't be accurate on the profile then I'm not returning your I'm not even return you you know yeah sorry <laughs> is that bad I could say to him to hey you weren't own. accurate on this you you lied on this profile and now I you know no I don't I don't want to be mean so it's probably mean to ghost somebody I ghosted somebody one time. Yeah. Only one time. And I think I've done it twice. I've learned a valuable lesson from doing that as a man. Uh, she was a great catch. Um, just wasn't my person. Mm -hmm. um, she was very kind and generous to me beyond what I deserved grace and mercy beyond what I deserved. Um, but she did call me out on it a month later. I actually wrote about it in my book and now she and I are in a great place. It's, it's but fine. That's good. We're still friends. Here's a ghosting story to go down that trail. I didn't ghost. I was ghosted. This is pretty recent. So, <gasps> So right after, and I'm sure we're going to get to all how you and I met <laughs> and the whole reason yep. why I'm on this podcast, because technically, technically, I've, right been, I've been on your podcast before. Yes, you have. Just not in person. Mm -hmm. True that. We'll get there. But um, after I started dating, or I said that I was going to be open to dating this past spring, I went to this place that I like to go and it's, it's a legit honky tonk. It's like in the middle of the woods. I like to go there with my friends. We are gonna go, a really, a band that I love was gonna be there. And I'm glad we went because they broke up during, not very far after that. And um, I danced with this gentleman all night. He kept coming over and dancing with me and there was this other guy that kept wanting to dance with me. And so like the two of them kept taking turns <laughs> dancing with me. Like but two rams. They were, as soon horns. as one was done, the other would come over and dance with me. And um, and it was fun because I like to two step. I like to have fun. I hate it when that happens, by the way. Oh, well, <laughs> anyway. <laughs> that never happens to a dude, come on. <laughs> but any, yeah, because girls don't ask guys to dance. Guys are supposed to ask us. Fair enough. That's how I feel about it. So anyway, I was I danced with him. At the end of the night, I was like, he was really cute, you know. And then my friend went and he wouldn't ask me for his number. So my, my friend went to him and said, aren't you going to ask my friend Karin for her number? And he was like, yeah, yeah. I guess he was kind of shy. So he took my number and he texted me. We texted for two weeks. Then he ghosted me. He ghosted me. And I was like, okay, whatever. That's fine. Well, then a couple weeks after that is when I went on the first date with a gentleman that I'm dating now. Yeah. And we've been dating for three months. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Come to find out that the gentleman that I've been dating for three months and this gentleman that ghosted me are very good friends. <gasps> like they and neither one of them knew that oh. I and he didn't know that I had started dating his best friend, but out of the blue, he texted me and that said, is fantastic. He texted me, he said, I just heard a thing about ghosting and what it is. And I listened to the, I think it was a podcast or something. And he's like, and I realized that's what I've done to you. And I wanted to tell you that I'm sorry. And then he told me the reason why he hadn't written me back or whatever. And by this time I was dating his friend, which he didn't know. <laughs> they ended up talking Gosh. about it later. But, um, and then yeah. I just, I just, repl it, that was very gracious and a gentleman thing for him to do. And I'm really impressed with him as a man for doing that to me and saying he was sorry. And so I just replied, thank you. That was very nice of you to tell me that. And that's all I said. Cause I wasn't okay. going to initiate anything because so, he ghosted me okay. and I was with his friend too. And it was kind of weird at the time. I was and, like, and, and there's no, there's no pressure here. Okay. Yes. Um, because we're 
you know, we're local. Yes. Can you can you tell us why he ghosted? Oh, he had um I don't know it might well You don't have to. It was a But I know people he are had to wondering go, right he now. He went out of town to take care of a family situation, I think, and he was out of town for several weeks working on a house after I think somebody all right, so it was a family yeah, situation. It was a family situation. Okay. So I think okay. it was legitimate. Fair enough. But, yeah. Yeah, It was enough. just nice that he actually came back and told me. He, he apologized. And you know what that made me think? It made me think good of him, but it also made me think good of the gentleman that I had started dating because I knew they were very good friends. And I'm like, hmm, he's a good man. He picked a good man as a friend. That That was like... It was like a green flag for him, like, thank you for apologizing. But it also, at the same time, was a green flag for the gentleman I was dating. Because yeah. I'm like, hmm. they're friends. Birds of a feather. That's exactly what I thought. Right. Yes. La- last topic. For you, she, and for you, he, is in two rom-coms. They're, they're all in, and they love the rom-coms. How do you feel about that? Rom-coms? Romantic comedy. I know that's a random question. I don't know why that makes me laugh. So, thinking about it this way, a lot of this people so who love their rom coms are. I'm not gonna throw like a complete and total blanket statement, but a lot of them are helpless romantics. They are. Uh, they have an unrealistic um, idea of what romance and dating and love and and things like that are uh they tend to be more looking for perfect people or prince charming to come sweep them off their feet instead Mm of you know actually doing the work for the normal person so someone is into rom-coms heavily they they love uh their matthew mcconaughey movies and their uh (laughs) Who Ryan else? Reynolds, yeah, Matthew yeah. McConaughey, the Notebook, Gosling, you know that type of thing. Those three. Sandra so, Bullock. So, how do you feel uh, once you find that out? Me first, or you first? Take it. If he's into them, yeah, it would be kind of surprising. Like <laughs> I expect my guys to be kind of like, yeah, my favorite movie is Shawshank. You know, like they always give the same like. You know, I don't know. I don't expect a man to be into rom-coms, but if he likes the really funny ones, Mm -hmm. then I'm okay with it. Like the proposal, because that's freaking hilarious. You stole me. Oh, no, no. You stole me. No, I have... so here's the deal. I have a Betty White prayer candle in my bedroom because I think it's hilarious. I'm, like, going to be Betty White at 100. Not even kidding you. My favorite rom-com. And How to Lose a Guy in 10 Days. That's funny, too. My favorite (laughs) rom-com... Yes. Is the proposal. Oh, I love that movie. That's my favorite. Yeah. You can't take that. It's well, mine. can we share? Okay, we All can right, share. All right, we'll share it. <laughs> so, so that's your favorite so, rom-com the, yeah. between the two of you? Yeah. No, it's my favorite. It's my of favorite all time. Okay. of all time. I'm going to throw out just a very random one, uh, but 27 Dresses is mine. <laughs> okay, I love that one just because I love Wait, the dresses. Is that the about the one the girls always the bridesmaids yeah the bride. yes. exactly she had she has like 27 uh bridesmaids dresses in her yeah. like apartment it's or something good, like that it's yeah a yeah it's a good, it's it's a good i haven't seen it in a while but you know why mm, I like just that a side one note there is because of the scene with the benny and the jets that's a fun scene. oh yeah when they get drunk. all right so here's the deal Kay. man <laughs> maybe this will surprise you because I'm kind of, uh, I don't know, I guess you could say branded as sort of a rugged Midwestern sort of guy. But, like, if I'm home alone, I'm all about action movies, you know, blood and guts and, you know, dude stuff. Right. But if I'm with a girl, rom com is my favorite. I'm talking cherry Pepsi, popcorn, cherry lots of blankets Pepsi and pillows. Cherry Pepsi is my drink. Right. <laughs> and the more, snu- like, so much snuggle you're sweating. 
and the proposal is absolutely, I don't even know how many times I've seen the, the proposal, window. but it's a lot. Oh, I know. Sometimes and 50 if first I'm in dates. a... 50 First Dates, I love that, that movie. That's I a classic. That Adam too. Sandler. And that's yeah. great. And I don't it. love a lot of Adam Sandler movies, but I like that one. Because okay. I love Drew Barrymore. Hold on. I This is just a random parallel, but I read this thing about uh, Adam Sandler, and I feel like it, has, it relates to travel agents a little bit. But someone said... Adam Sandler makes the same movie every single year. He gets all of his buddies together, goes to a random location, films it for half a year, and then does whatever the heck he wants. And he walks around in his basketball shorts all day long. That's yeah, his life. That sounds like, like Adam that's Sandler. His, that's his life. He just makes yeah. the same movie every single year with Pretty his much. buddies in a different location. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yes. He is. This alter ego. Yeah. So he is. He's absolutely right. Uh-huh. Um, that's that's who he is. Anyways. Yeah. No, I, I agree with that. So I'm a hardcore. I probably should be ashamed for saying this, but I'm not. But I am a hard, hardcore requested. I'm, I guess I'm a requested. I'm a requested. I like watching. I just, I don't know. I like going to the movies. So. I am a I rejected. Like, you're rejected? <gasps> mm-hmm. Yeah. Sorry. Shame on you. You don't want you. a girl that likes a lot of rom coms. No. That's um, how you get your snuggle on, buddy. All I'm saying is that I I get cautious, like I was saying earlier, that the person has an unrealistic expectation on what the relationship's really going to be like. Um, and. You know, first of all, Courtney's not a big rom com. Yeah, obviously, right, so I'm, that, I'm, that I'm that marrying her. So, like yeah, but like. but I, I don't like I I I would definitely be very optimistic. I would be optimistic, but very cautious if I met someone who was really big into them. So I have a question. What's the last movie you saw in the theater? What if your significant other said, "I want to watch Fifty Shades." You're a no-go? No-go. We saw that in the theater together, and it w- we laughed the whole time. So Yeah. I, I'm a no-go. What no about go. five and a half weeks? That's old school. You mean school, nine right? and a half weeks? Or nine and a half. Why did I come up with five? I don't know. That's too short. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you and I were on the exact same page. <laughs> That's too short. Okay. <laughs> oh, my gosh. <laughs> Well, nine and a half could be too long. I'm yeah. just saying. Yeah. Um, nine and a half <laughs> weeks. That's old school. That's old school. I think I remember. Ian probably s- doesn't even know what nine does, and a half weeks is. He was probably not even born yet. You He's can never heard leave of your head on. <laughs> Remember that? Joe Cocker in the kitchen? Yes. With the food? Okay. <sighs> yeah. That was nine and a That was uh, Fifty Shades before Fifty Shades. So I. Okay. Come on now. Like my okay. What are you saying? If your significant other other wants to watch Fifty Shades with you, or like we're not talking first dates now. No, because that's a no. No, no, um, no. I don't know. I'm like I don't know because it's this the sex part. Like I don't have a problem with the sex. It's the it's very manipulative. The manipulation and controlling thing. I don't I don't do. Like the It's consensual. I know it's consensual, but I don't like the I don't know how to explain I feel it. You. I feel like it's kind of okay, so there's there is there is a difference between being I can't believe I'm doing this on a podcast. There is a difference between Two people who are in the bedroom and they like to have submissive and dominant roles and they have fun. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And Agreed. slash someone that has control issues. That's a totally different thing. And you, if you're going to do the fun stuff in the bedroom, you need to be with someone that doesn't have control issues. And I feel like that crosses the line. That's how I feel. I don't feel like it's functional. I feel like it's dysfunctional. 
It's dysfunctional. I don't like it. I'm not saying I don't like playing roles in bed in the bedroom. I'm just saying I don't like it to transfer into a dysfunctional relationship. And I feel like the relationship is dysfunctional in those movies. That's my opinion. I have to press this. <laughs> I got I gotta press. I I have to. So question. Yes. What percentage of the general female single adult populace would agree with you? I have no idea. Well, I'm asking you to take a guess. Um, I have a number. And I feel like it's pretty accurate. I feel like maybe probably only 30% would agree with me. Like, I, okay, so here's the thing. I would probably watch it because it would be fun. But I would take into consideration that I don't really like the storyline. How's that? That's probably more accurate. Fair Quite enough. honestly, if I've had a couple drinks in me and my significant other is like, hey, let's watch this, I might be like, yeah, let's watch this. <laughs> My boyfriend's well, so gonna watch this. For the my record, my boyfriend's gonna watch this later, and he's gonna be like, "Movie night." Just you know, for the <laughs> record, it's typically not going. Typically, okay, right. So I deal with averages. I don't deal with absolutes. I, I always say that. Okay. Yeah. But on the average, it's not going to be the male that makes the suggestion. Yeah, I think you're right there. Yeah. That's why, maybe that's why the question threw me off. Yeah. So I wouldn't make the suggestion for that movie. I would just be like, I would I'm just gonna say go the, make our own I'm going to say it's. Um, <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> conservatively, it's 50 50. And if I'm going to really, if I'm going to talk about a 40 plus year old single female, 80 20. Really? Yeah. You think they all want to watch that with you? I'm just saying <laughs> that I believe that 80% plus 40 plus single female would think about it. Now, whether or not they would act on it and make the suggestion, that that's a whole other layer. We're not going to go on, we're not going to go to that deep. But would they think about it? Oh, yeah. Okay. And I'm going to. And that implies a whole lot of other things. Right. And I think probably maybe I should share one little tidbit up about me that would clarify. So what I said will make a whole lot more sense. I did date someone for a short amount of time for about two or three months that was very controlling and very dominating and... I broke up with him partly because of that. Also, he had a really, he had some other issues, some other red flags, one of them. Well, I won't go into it. But anyway, so maybe I'm, I'm predisposed to kind of pull away from that right now. Mm -hmm. Probably. So there you go. You know, this is the, we barely scratched this. And here's the deal. On this podcast, I like, I want to, I want to brush you know, some, shall we say, R material, but I, I, I don't want to go much further than that. No, I want to make it either. consumable. <laughs> yeah. No, I know. Well, I'm good with that. I know. Totally good with that. Okay. I want to hit a main topic. We good? Yes. Okay. So, <clears throat> main topic. Actually, this is the topic for you and I. <laughs> and it's it's very meaningful and very uh important to me very significant um and this is the first time since this event happened that you and i have actually been face to face yes so when did you and i first meet <laughs> um right do you remember the month yes yeah what was it we met the day before easter Okay. Yeah. And 
Uh, we met at your favorite hotspot. My yes, my place, not my place, mm-hmm. my joint that I your go to. Your favorite hotspot. Yes. Uh, totally by accident. Yes. Uh, I was. Oh, I was actually there with a friend. Yes, you were. Right. And my friends had just left. Yeah. And we struck up a comp uh, competition, <laughs> a conversation. Yes. And uh, I asked a few questions, and you know, we had some dialogue going. And we became Facebook friends, Mm -hmm. social media, and we began, uh, I mean, just to make it easier for people to understand kind of pen palling. Yeah. And, and we would, (laughs) we would share some, some thoughts and some ideas about dating and, you know, and so would you take it? Can you, would you, can you kind of take it from there? I can take it from there. So we, um, we started talking this spring um, and DMing each other back and forth. And um, at the time that I had met you, I had just come off of, I just finished 75 hard and I had, I mean, last year was the pandemic and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. I had, I really quick, I was married for 23 years. I've been actually, that's important information. Okay. Yeah. I was married for 23 years. Um, I had kind of a public divorce and I ended up kind of hiding under a rug for a while. Um, And when I started dating again, I dated someone for two and a half years. I've been divorced about five years. I started dating someone. I I dated them for about two and a half years. I thought we were going to get married. And... um, we broke up during the pandemic right at the same time that we broke up. I got laid off because the entire travel industry shut down. And so 2020 for me was a very depressing year. Mm -hmm. Um, I drank a lot. I struggled a lot, struggled with a lot of things. And then my, one of my besties, one day she just took my phone at the very spot we were sitting when we met. (laughs) I didn't know that. I was sitting there with her. She took, I think it was there. I yeah. I think she took my phone and said, "That's it. You're getting on Bumble." And so we started my profile. Oh no, we did it at the other place. The other place. Okay. Now I remember. But anyway, I dated a whole bunch of people online last fall, and then decided I wasn't going to date anymore. Decided I was done, and I had during this whole time. Because I was kind of heartbroken and I'd given up on dating and I decided not to date while I did 75 hard. And back when I first got divorced, I had, I'm a journaler. Yes, I know. I am a journaler. And I make these very, I make these journals. They're called bullet journals. And I put my schedule and everything in them. They're leather and they're very nice and Um, I journal mixed with my schedule and it's a way of slowing my brain down and taking that stuff out of my phone because I feel like I'm on my phone too much and um, I write affirmations in there I wrote goals to myself I do all sorts of positive things for myself I keep track of all the books I read there's a lot of stuff I do in my journal I also made a list I wrote out a list of all the things that I wanted in a man (laughs) and I kept adding to it (laughs) indeed you did (laughs) over the course of the last five years and it came up in our conversation and Mm -hmm. I ended up sending you a picture of it and you did a you did a podcast about on May 13th. On May 13th about my journal. So real quick, for those of you that are watching, so, if you just scroll down in the feed and you go to uh, a live video that I did all by myself in my home office on May 13th. So I'm, I'm, I'm going to crack it open here yes. with your permission. Yes. That 20 minute uh, video that I did on May 13th is about you. Yes. I'm, I'm the journal girl. You are. I'm the journal girl. And I'm so pumped that you're here. I'm so, so freaking excited. So, <laughs> so basically. Because the story that follows is. The story uh, that follows is pretty great. So 
basically, if you go and watch that episode, yeah, I had made this very intricate list. And it was a good list, but it was pretty extreme. And I was using that list literally... I thought I was like trying to set standards for myself and in a way I was, but I was really using it as a way to keep myself from being willing to date. I was making a big giant wall. No one could live up to that list. And I even, I even said to I you, know. I even said to you and honestly, I, I couldn't live up to that. I, list. I honestly didn't expect every, anyone to be everything on that list. So some of them were just guidelines. It's like that line from Pirates of the Caribbean. Long. I know. <laughs> but I, you, if you saw the rest of my journal, you'd understand. I write a lot. So, like, it's very in context. Yeah. It wasn't that bad. But so then I took the list and I, after we had been. We've been corresponding for, for a while. For like a month. Yeah. Back and forth about it. So this is one thing I do. I write every day. I write something I'm thankful for before I go to bed. Yeah. That's February. But um, okay. so this is your journal right here. This is my journal. I brought it tonight. I'm glad that you did. We are so <laughs> on the same wavelength. Well, I knew that's what Can you, you. Oh, you've got it marked. <gasps> there it is. So then what happened okay. was after we talked, I decided I'm going to set my. Yeah, down. just just take everybody through this. <laughs> So I had made this big list and then um, I decided that it was a little over the top. And so I decided to just, I was going to let go. Yes. And I was just going to let go and give it to God and say, I was going to pick the a few things that mattered to me and mm -hmm. just let the rest of it go. And because really, I thought this was what I wanted and everything, but I feel like like God knows what we need. Like what we need can be totally different than what we think we want. True. So I just let go of it and I put pieces of paper over it that said, be open and God's got you. That's what I wrote on there. And then, Now, hold on, hold on. I This is pretty big. Hold on. Yeah. So I want to <laughs> point out to everybody. So everything that you see around, like in the margins, everything here, this is what you had originally written which yeah. we can't show to people because you've got these new pages on yeah, here but if you go back right to may 13 and and then you and i had hold on leave it open there okay. <laughs> this is Sorry. big i know it's just really intense for me <laughs> i know i know it is i know um and we'll move on okay so you and i talked and, and you did some soul searching and mm -hmm. some and uh, every prayers and everything you do and if you could just hold this up hold this up here so what she wrote was Be open. A, after i don't know a, a couple weeks that we had talked uh all, all online yeah and it said be open uh -huh. god's got you yeah and then you sent that to me like i i gotta tell you there are very few times especially at my age where I feel like in a moment, uncontrollably, like I have to fall to my knees and just put my hands in the air. <laughs> and that was one of those moments when you sent that to me. So it meant a lot to me too. Well, and I will tell you, Ben, you told me that you did the show, but I saw the show. And I, I told you asked me permission to share it. And I said, what did I tell you? I told you, but when you share it, don't tell me when you share it. Cause it'll freak me out. Mm -hmm. And, um, because <laughs> I, I have been on this, like I have been in church positions as a worship leader yeah, for yeah. a very long time. And I'm, it's easy for me to sing in front of people, but it's very hard for me to speak and be open in front of people. Cause I'm very guarded. I don't want people to know those private things. And so I just didn't want to see it, <laughs> but then I watched it. And so then hearing what I wrote read out loud by someone else. Yeah. Hit Cause me. I did. I read it. He read the entire <laughs> read thing it. and it hit me so hard. And I sat and I cried through the whole thing because it was really intense. I felt like you were reading my heart out loud. That's what it felt like. I so want to hug you right now. <laughs> 
And it's intense. It's intense. It was really intense. And the thing is, a lot of those things on there were really good things. Um, some of them, when you read them, you're like, you read them, and I was like, I was sitting here thinking, those aren't things that I'm expecting. Those are just things I like. They're not requirements. But, you know, you can't go back. It's not like, I don't know. I, but I was using it as a block for me, True a way that. to say, I'm not really open. No one's going to date me because I had been hurt so badly that I just, I put this wall up. So then after I put the thing on there that said, be open, then what happened? Well, I wrote you later that week. I got, after I yeah, said. Yeah, I want you to tell us. Okay. So after I said, I'm going to be open. I got asked out four times in three days. <laughs> I did. <laughs> and it's crazy. That's what happened. Like I opened yeah. myself up and I got asked out four times in a three day period. Um, and so I went on some dates. It was kind of messy. Yeah. <laughs> Which it can be. Yeah, mm -hmm. it was. Um, but. But I ended up dating a gentleman and we started dating so this was we started talking i think i started dating dating him like the end of august uh, or april mm -hmm. and um, we've been dating ever since we've been dating for three months and we're exclusive now and we're going to mexico in a month yeah <laughs> show's over <laughs> that's it so and show's I'm, just beginning <laughs> And I don't know what's going to happen. Like, we're both, he and I are both in a place. I'm still, like, coming from a place. And I will say that you don't know this because I haven't told you this yet. But last week, the gentleman that, um, you know, I was married for 23 years. Then I dated a gentleman for two and a half years, and we broke up during the pandemic. He almost immediately started dating someone from my church. Mm. He proposed to her in Mexico last week. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Y'all were, some of you from my church are going, we, we were wondering if you knew. And I'm like, yeah, I know. It's all good. I yeah. wish them the best. Yeah, it's good. No but problem. It, it, no problem. I'm fine with that and everything. Good but for them. Good for them. Yeah. But it was a hard week last week. And um, so, but at the same time, I'm like, it's all good. I'm moving on. But I'm moving on slowly. <laughs> yeah. And I told, I, you know, and I was telling my boyfriend all of that or whatever. And, and I was saying, to, I prefaced, I said, I'm going to tell you, this has upset me. It happened last week. And I just want you to know. And I'm not upset because I want to ever get back with him. I'd never want to do that. I'm upset because I felt like, you know, I, it, there was a part of me that was like, you didn't want to marry me. You never wanted to travel with me. You said you never wanted to travel, but all of a sudden you want to travel. And now you, you know, now you want to get married, but it's, and so that was a personal thing for me. And it, it had less to do with him as with me. And it hit me for a minute. And, but then I let go of it and I was fine. And then I told him, I was, I told my boyfriend, I said, you know, we're going to Mexico, but I don't want a ring. We're not doing that. You know? And he's laughed. He laughed. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm taking, we're taking everything very slow. I, very slow yeah. and i'm appreciative of that yeah so so that's where i am i don't know what will happen i don't know if he'll he and i will end up together for a very very long time i don't know if we won't i am just being open now to the possibilities of what can be and my heart is open and i am i'm not a, even though i've been hurt i was i've been hurt in the past I'm not afraid to love someone again Yeah. with all my heart. I'm not afraid to do that. I think that makes me very brave. I'm going to take a drink. <laughs> so, yeah, I, you know, I've made a career out of being the guy that's tough to follow. That's hard to follow. <laughs> And so I'm just going to be very, hey, hand me the book right there, would you please? Thank you. Oh, 
my gosh, I'm so excited. So, um, I just want to tell you for me, um, that's very reaffirming to me. Um, Wow, I like I'm not the speechless type. <laughs> I'm totally not the speechless type. Like I'm when I was a kid, <laughs> I won extemporaneous speech competitions. Like here's a topic, bam, start talking. And even this stops me dead in my tracks. And the reason is because it's so authentic. It's so real and um you're actually uh, you and Ian are the first people to see this, um, but this is a sample of I'm my so, book. I'm so excited! <laughs> like this is this is what it's gonna it's gonna look like. Um, you know, it's got. Ah. So um, I wrote this book so that people could experience what you have. I really mean that I, I wrote this book because I wanted to journal what I want to happen for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's like I went through two and I so, made, I made new pages. I'm not really going to show them to you though, because it's different. No, you can keep things private, but I'm just yeah. saying I made some new. Yeah. That yeah. I, I can kind of see as you're flipping through there. That's, like there's a lot of heart and soul in that. Oh yeah, it's all for my sure. heart and soul is in there. <laughs> so, um, you know, Ian, we, a lot of times we have main topics, but I, I don't. There's nothing else we can say that's going to trump this. Um, for me, as a book author, I don't even give a shit about that. Um, just as a everyday person, to know that I've had this type of impact especially on somebody like you because you're you're very deep i know that from all of our correspondence yeah um thank it's a life changer for me thank you well thank you it was a life changer for me too i feel like i met you right at a time when i was in the middle of a transition and indeed you helped me walk through it for a minute there <laughs> it's pretty pretty great yeah. I know that I've gotten to that point now where I know I'll be okay no matter whether I'm single or with someone that's where I'm at high five yeah that's the best place to be yeah so um thank you <laughs> this the for just on a personal level on a on a emotional level for me this has been the most important the most meaningful and overdue but just the right time show that i've done since we started this in january oh thank you bobby thank you thank you for having me on so don't, don't make uh, me cry i and i i actually <laughs> I, I had to kind of like, like stretch my eyes out earlier because I was getting a little choked up. Well, I cried that whole time when you did the <laughs> podcast where you read my yeah, I bet May whatever May thirteenth. Oh, and by the way, I you, cried through the whole thing. You weren't the only one. Yeah. My my uh, private mess direct messages after from that little yeah, it was crazy. It, it blew up. Yeah. Because there's a lot of women. Oh. Yeah. Well, there's so many that are just like that. Men too. Men too. But women, I think, just do it more consciously. Yeah. So I'm going to do a quick uh, book update here, Ian, if that's all right. And we're going to wrap this up. So here's basically what the book is going to look like. Um, and, um, so this is the final cover art uh, awesome. with the inside jackets included. 
and uh, we're going to send it to Amazon um, in about a week. It's all been formatted. We're just tweaking a couple little aesthetic things uh, on the way some things are formatted on the inside. And Amazon will set on it for about two weeks to do their magic, and it will be available for order. Yay. So uh, I'm actually leaving for Sturgis. Are uh, you really? <laughs> come on now. I mean, yeah. You I'm going to go to autumn. Sturgis. Got to take Autumn on a date. And I am going, so sometime when I'm in Sturgis around the middle of August, um, hopefully is when this is going to be available for order. Um, I am going to pre-order some books of my own to sign and give to some very important people. And you are absolutely one of those people. So thank, thank you. you. Thank, thank you for you, being Bobby. here. So stay tuned, Undateable, the book, hitting bookshelves, specifically Amazon here in three weeks. And I want to let everybody know, uh, if you haven't caught some of my posts on social media already, I am well into the writing of my second book, which is called... Dateable. Dateable. <laughs> So it's the sequel to this book. We're going to go from undateable to dateable. So stay tuned for that. Uh, it's going to be a hot minute. Uh, you know, I can't just release one book after the other. It's There's a process, I guess. So anyways, thank you for watching. Thank you so much for being here in you're the bomb.com. And uh, stay tuned. More episodes to come. <laughs>